welcome back. So today we're covering chapter 1.3, which is the parable of the East. So this is, we are now getting into actually doing separation of variables. So in this example that I'm going to show you, we're going to be solving a first order ordinary differential equation using this method. Um, you can see that it so separates pretty easy. It basically just involves algebra. Uh, and then you have whatever, um, uh, Whenever we separate it, we have to use calculus to solve the integrals, and then we can get our final solution uh, in the form that, format that we want. So you can see we have the example here, uh, a function g, y, g of y times uh, y prime is equal to f of x. First step that we always do is we change that y prime into dy dx, just like you see in the example. Uh, we then separate the functions uh to the corresponding variable so we send all the functions with a y to one side all the functions uh to the x to the other side and that becomes a first order separable ode you can see straightforward if you want to solve this one basically we integrate both sides and then we get our solution so let's get into that you guys probably see, saw saw this already in class but hopefully this example will make it easier so we have the following example So we have here x squared plus 1 times y prime, and this is equal to uh, x times y. This is our example. So once again, the first step that we need to do is uh, we want to rewrite everything, x squared plus 1. But that y prime that we saw here, we want to rewrite this as dy over dx, and this is equal to x, y, same thing. Uh, after this, we continue, and then we have, uh, we want to separate things to both sides, so we have x squared plus 1, um, dy, we basically multiply both sides times the x. And we have xy times the x. You can see we're gonna be sending all the x's. We want the dx's and dy to be on top because uh, it's basically our, our uh, for the integration. So next thing that I should do, what do you think? I want to have all my x's on the right and the y's on the left. So with this next one, I will basically divide by y. I will have here x squared plus 1 over y dy. And then this is equal to x dx, right? Because we were divided by y uh, dx. So from here, we now divide everything by x squared plus 1. So basically, we're going to be left with dy over y, and that's equal to x over x squared plus 1 dx. And when you look at that, it looks pretty similar to um, uh, uh, something that we had before. And this is when we know they are in separable form. So this is not my final answer. This is not where I stop. Um, this is what we this is known as a separable form, meaning that we already separated our val uh, variables on both sides to whatever they correspond. And now we can solve these using calculus. So basically, these steps that we just did that was it for differential equations. Like this is probably the new things that you guys learn, which is not really new because all we did was algebra, but this is where that steps of differential equations stop and the next problem becomes calculus. Okay, so what we need to do right now is integrate both sides. So on this side, I will integrate uh, dy over y and that will equals the integral uh, of x 
over x squared plus 1 dx. So we have two integrals. Um, they are pretty straightforward to do. So uh, we know that this one, this purple one, will be solved by substitution. We basically did this one uh, in the previous video. So we do u is equals to x squared plus 1. And the u will be 2x dx. And then we know that du over 2 is equals to x dx. So then this will turn the integral into uh, du over 2 over u, which is 1 half integral of du over u, which we already know it will be equals to 1 half natural log of u uh, plus c. All right, so we have um, that. And then we have um, the next one is the next integral. So integrating this one is pretty straightforward. This one dy over y. So, and to do this one, uh, I mean, once again, it's just this dy over y is pretty, sim pretty the same thing as d over u, so that one will just be natural log of y um, plus c as well, and then this will equal to one half natural log of u, in this case u we know as x squared plus one plus c, and we don't really need two c's on both sides, we can combine them. Um, and Basically, we can get one, so this will be natural log of y equals to uh, one half ln of x squared plus one plus c. And uh, most problems, depending where we on the problem, you might want to stop here. This will be a good place to stop. Um, and my suggestion is that. Continue solving all the way, uh, solving for y equals to something, simplifying as much as possible. If you can solve this without making more errors or if you, without making the problem messier. Uh, at least for this one, I think this one we can in fact solve all the way to y equals something. Uh, but there might be problems where you might have something like a ln of y squared plus one and so on. And this will be a, a good place to stop because if you start doing the next step of the exponentials, it can become messier. So my uh, my suggestion is simplify uh, as much as you can, knowing that it will not make it a messier solution. Uh, but if you don't, if you can, or it's gonna become messier, you know, aesthetically unpleasing, just do it like this. Uh, but this one, once again, we can. So what we can do here is we can raise everything to the exponential. So we can do everything raised to the exponential, right? So it can do e to the ln of y, e to the all of that. So from here, e to the ln of y, that will cancel, and we're going to be left with y equals 2. And then this part, we cannot simplify like this. So we will write it as e to the one half of ln of x squared plus one times e to the c, right? And then we can continue simplifying this. We'll get y is equals to e to the, right, we need to bring that one half in front. So this will be natural log of x squared plus 1. And everything of this will be to the half power times e to the c. And basically, this term e to the c is a constant. So we can name this just as capital 
c and then this natural log and exponential can cancel and then now we are left with y is equal or you can say y of x right same thing it's equal to i'm gonna bring the capital c in the front so capital c and this will be only x squared plus one all to the one half and yeah you can keep the absolute values if you want same thing uh and this is our answer and this is what we call our general solution um any questions you guys might have you can follow along um you can do this i can see this problem wasn't difficult it was pretty straightforward and i will do another one just so you guys can see it but you can follow this along with the notes i have provided for you guys already so this problem is problem seven on page 18 of your book and we have y prime times sine of pi x which equals to y of or y times cosine of pi x so let's solve this problem together once again my first step will be to rewrite everything together but transforming that y prime into dy dx times sine of pi x equals to y times cosine of pi x and then I want to multiply times dx so I will have dy times sine of pi x equals to y of cosine pi x times dx once again x is on the right y is on the left um next step will be to divide by y so i will have dy times sine of pi x over y and it's equal to cosine of pi x dx and then if i divide by sine of pi x i will get over here dy over y all right dy over y and that equals to um cosine of pi x over sine of pi x times dx and this will be our separable form. Separable form. Now, all we need to do after this is basically to integrate. And let's integrate these two. So we have these two colors. So we have over here um the integral once again of dy over y and it will be equal to uh in this case the integral of cosine over sine we know cosine over sine that's cotangent so this will be cotangent of pi x dx uh and this one's the pressure forward so if we solve both of these together uh we get the dy over y that's just ln of y and we can just write the plus c to the x so we don't need to combine them later we can just uh, skip that step but we still know that there will be a constant integration do not forget it and then the integral of cotangent um you can just find the the integral given an integral table in the in your book so according to your integral table is uh ln of sine of pi x over pi and then don't forget that plus c so yeah this was given by the integral table i did not make it up i found it on the integral table some integrals are just given to you like that um they already given the solutions to the integrals so this was given like that you can find it in, in your book 
So on this one, we can continue simplifying even further. You can see the Y is easy to simplify. So if you can simplify the Y easily, you should do it. If it's not easily to simplify the Y, then you might stop. So if we rate both of this one to the exponential, so we have E to the natural log of Y, which equals to E to the one over pi to the natural log of sine of pi x plus c. We can see that natural logs will cancel out and we're gonna be left with y and that's equal to, uh, in this case it will be e to the uh, natural log of sine of pi x raised to the one over pi times e to the c, right? Because we have over here that plus, which we can rewrite as a multiplication of two exponentials, which we saw in the very first video. And from there, we can simplify even further. This one, they cancel out. This one, we can rewrite as a capital C. And then we are left with y as a function of x. It's equal to capital C sine of pi x, everything to the one over pi. And this is my general solution. And you can see that that plus C, it became the C in our coefficient. And this is my general solution. So the, that, that plus C became that capital C, and this is my answer to my problem. So that is the problem. Um, I think this is where I want to stop the video and then I uh, will just give you one more uh, for you to solve. Um, try to solve this one right here. Uh, I will give you this one. Try to see if you can solve this one and then let me know. So the example I'm giving you to solve, to practice, is the following. Y prime plus e to the x plus y equals to zero and you need to solve this one by separation of variables so so solve it and then let me know what you get hopefully you guys got the right answer all right there is it for this video that's it for today i will see you guys next class and as always good luck